TFRs, or temporary flight restrictions, should be a part of everyday flight planning. Introduced as a security measure, TFRs are serious and pilots should always check NOTAMs to be aware of their current or future presence. Unfortunately, these TFRs continue to be violated on a regular basis. Violating a TFR could result in serious consequences, and a complete pre-flight check would have prevented a possible violation. Some TFRs are considered blanket TFRs and may not be listed individually with flight service. These TFRs include stadium TFRs, which are established around stadiums with a seating capacity of 30,000 people or more and are active during major sporting events, such as baseball and football games. Be sure to check the stadiums and game schedules in your local area to be sure that you are aware of any potential or active TFRs. A TFR violation could result in an airborne intercept. The FAA mandates that pilots familiarize themselves with intercept procedures in the event that an airborne intercept is conducted. The FAA has published material outlining the procedures for airborne intercepts, and I have put together a video to demonstrate these procedures. I sat down with Mike Turoff, who is the commander of the Hobby Senior Squadron in Civil Air Patrol and a FAST Team representative in the Houston area. In 2004, failure to check NOTAMs and get a flight brief ahead of time resulted in an air-to-air -air intercept and a violation on his record. I sat down with him to discuss the experience. Back in 2004, I was doing some recurrency in a Cardinal aircraft, an RG, and I was doing some maneuvers under the hood, slow flight obviously. And when my instructor told me to come out from under the hood, I looked outside and I saw this strange blue flame at about the two o'clock high position and said, what the heck is that? Then we realized that President Bush was in town. We had completely forgotten about it. And guess what? There was a TFR and we had just violated it. Oh, were we in for it. The first thing that the instructor did was he got on approach frequency rather than 121.5, which is what we should have done. Called approach, identified ourselves, and said, we've just been intercepted by an F-16. What's going on? And we were informed that we were in a presidential TFR and should not be there. We were one of eight aircraft intercepted that night. Fortunately, we were going away from the Air Force One, not towards it, as one unfortunate pilot was who got flares fired at her. We identified ourselves to approach, and approach contacted the uh, fighter interceptors, and we were given instructions to head out away from our airport and from Ellington towards Brazoria County and land there and get on the phone and talk to them. After contacting air traffic control, they didn't give you any further visual signals? Correct. Never fly locally without at least checking with flight service station for TFRs. It may be beautiful weather where you are, but if a TFR happens to be on record or pops up, 
and you don't know about it, you can be in serious trouble. You can lose your certificate over it. I was very fortunate in the fact that I only had my certificate suspended for 60 days. And why? Because I immediately confessed it was my fault, my error, and I said, what do you folks want me to do? And they told me, since it was a security matter, that the uh, uh, Secret Service had to be involved, and the Secret Service wanted a suspension for 60 days, and I said, no problem, as long as I don't have to pay for the fuel of the jet. <laughs> I also sat down with Gerard Buhlhahn, who retired from Homeland Security and is a certified flight instructor. He flew the airplanes and helicopters that performed airborne intercepts, and he is here to describe his experience. I've just completed a 24-year career with U.S. Customs and Border Protection. I'd like to talk to you about being intercepted. As a pilot with U.S. Customs, I spent many days enforcing the temporary flight restriction in the National Capital Region. Our Cessna citation was the first layer of what I called a three-layer approach to protect the vital assets in the National Capital Region from being subject to suicide airplane attacks. My job as an intercept pilot was to de-escalate the justification of the use of force or confirm its necessity to prosecute an unauthorized TFR penetrator. If I could not persuade the TFR violator to turn away from the threatened national asset, I was required to depart the area so the next two layers of defense could eliminate that threat with deadly force. Not every TFR is so securely protected as the National Capital Region, but rest assured, if you have been intercepted, it's because our government is serious about protecting the assets for situation that predicated the issuance of that TFR. So what can you do to make sure this doesn't happen to you? Get a weather brief with the flight surfing station. If you're flying in your local area, keep an open ear to sporting events that could trigger the creation of a protective TFR. If you can afford it, get a subscription to one of those in-flight tracking devices with in-flight downloading capabilities that will display TFRs that may have been activated since you completed your pre-flight plan. Well, that's well and good, but what happens if your best intentions somehow don't work out and you find yourself being intercepted? In a word, cooperate. Monitor 121.5. Squawk 7700 on your transponder. If you're unable to communicate by radio, utilize the intercept signals outlined in the Airman's Information Manual and demonstrated by Ms. Rovner. If you're able, do exactly what the interceptor instructs. Timing is critical. The interceptor will be trying to lead you away from the threatening activity and may try and guide you to an airport where both of you can land, or at least law enforcement will be there to complete the investigation of why you violated the TFR. Keep general aviation viable and fly safe. In conclusion, pilots should always check NOTAMs before flying, even if it is just local and the weather is great. Just a few minutes of time before the flight could go a long way in protecting your privileges as a pilot and conducting a safe flight.